everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. Uh, my name is Darlene, I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps. Um, and on this channel, I share my business information, I share um, how I run my business, my recipes, tips and tricks that I use, and I go over products um, and what they introduce into the products that we are designing. Um, so hopefully helping other creators create. That's my goal. Um, in today's video, we are going to go over the detox bar. Uh, so this is a detoxifying shampoo bar. Um, you'll see lots of people are really into the clarifying shampoos right now. Now terminology wise, there's a lot of difference between a clarifying and a detox bar. Clarifying generally strips everything out of your hair but doesn't introduce moisture back um, and generally made with synthetic. Uh, ingredients and a detox bar is made with more natural ingredients and it does also strip everything including environmental uh, build up out of the hair with those natural ingredients and it introduces moisture back so that's the how what I designed this bar around and why I call it the detox bar so I have everything here weighed out and just to kind of speed the video up for you guys a little bit you don't need to watch me weigh everything out um, but we'll go over each ingredient, what it brings to the bar, why we use it in this bar, and um, the steps that I use to make that. So if that's something that interests you, keep following along, and let's get started. Okay guys, so I have everything weighed out. Um, this is what we're going to melt our meltdown ingredients. So just like the previous bar, there is things that we need to melt down. It helps stabilize this bar and keep it in a solid puck form for us um, and I'll go through the ingredients so first of all we have our BTMS 50 which I added into the last shampoo bar I use it in all of my shampoos and conditioners um, it's an emulsifier and it adds conditioning and hardness to the bar so it's a pretty conditioning um, you could substitute it with BTMS 25 um, but it's not going to be as conditioning Okay, so for the BTMS 50, we are going to add in 73 grams. So 73 grams of the BTMS 50. And then we have our acetyl alcohol. So our acetyl alcohol is very conditioning. Um, it adds a lot of moisture to this bar. It helps harden the bar and it also helps uh, give a really nice rinse off uh, when you're rinsing that soap out of your hair so that that buildup isn't uh, occurring. Okay, so for the acetyl alcohol, 26 grams. Okay, now we also have stearic acid. Okay, so with our stearic acid, you guys, um, that is just going to help harden this bar and it helps emulsify things. So when um, you're creating the bubbles. Um, it allows the oils that we're adding into this to emulsify with the water. Um, and it also helps to, just like the BTMS 50, and it also helps to harden this bar up, okay? So with the stearic acid, it's nine grams. So we got nine grams of the stearic acid, okay? So we have that in there, and then we have our butters. now. I have mango butter and I have shea butter that I add into this. With this being a, a, a bar that cleanses and pulls all of that stuff off of the shafts of the hair and off the scalp, we want to be able to add moisture back into that. So the, the mango butter is um, going to add a lot of moisture and it actually helps create shine. Okay, And then we have our uh, shea butter. Okay, and it really helps to soften the hair. It's a really good moisturizer. Um, it's probably the best out of the two. Um, and it also adds some elasticity to the hair for, for less breakage. So we've got in here 15 grams of mango butter and 15 grams of shea butter. Okay, and that's going to go into our melting ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to put this on to start melting and then we will continue with putting all of our other products that need to be blended uh, that don't heat up, okay? So I'll just put this on and we'll be right back. Okay guys, so we are now going to get all of our dry surfactants mixed together. We have our sodium cocoa isonate noodles. Um, they are 
so SCI, most of you might know it by. Um, this is our dry surfactant that we use. Um, it is derived from coconut oil. Um, it has a good ability to allow um, water to mix with oil and dirt and allow for a better rinse off of those uh, oil and dirts that are in our hair. And it's a very gentle surfactant. It's awfully refer often referred to as baby foam because it's gentle enough for baby skin. All right, so we are going to put 514 grams into this bowl. Um, there can be some dust that come off this, so you may uh, probably should be wearing a mask um, so that you don't get those dust particles and you're breathing those in okay. All right, so we have our 514 grams of SCI noodles, and then we are going to add in SCI powder as well. Now, the reason I add powder in is because it helps my shampoo bar stay together. Um, these are quite chunky, so then it has the ability to crumble off, and we don't want that for our customers, so we add some powder in um, to help make more of a paste and hold those bars together, and I find this ratio works really well. Um, and we have 85 grams of that. So it's the exact same thing, it's just in powder form, you guys, so it's going to help with the rinse off, it's going to help with uh, the gentle cleansing of, of the hair shafts and the scalp, but we use powdered form to hold our bars together. So 85 grams of the SCI powder, and this is very light dust, you guys. Don't know if you can see that puffing up. Okay, so that is our powder surfactants. Now there's a few other powders that I'm going to add into this. Um, one being apple cider vinegar, okay? Um, the reason I use apple cider vinegar in this is it is a natural okay, um, stripper. Um, it's very good, full of nutrients and stuff for the hair, but it does help get all of the buildup off the hair. So this is what I'm going to use this in activated charcoal for our um, cleansing and, and detoxifying properties in this bar. Okay, so it's packed with nutrients. It will actually help with the tangling and frizziness of the hair. It uh, builds, or gets residue off the scalp and hair shafts, decrease dandruff, okay? It can unclog um, hair follicles. Uh, so it's got a lot of good properties to it. So we are putting in three grams of apple cider vinegar powder. Okay. The other thing that we are going to add into here, um, as far as a powder goes, is going to be some clown clay. Um, now the reason I use this is it does help to absorb the oils on the scalp, okay, um, to help take that off, but it's also moisturizing um, and uh, helps control damage. It's, I love this clay. I love clays. I love herbs, so we all know that about me. But we are putting in uh, 10 grams of the cleanlin clay, okay? And I'm just putting this in here with my powder so it gets all mixed in, okay? Um, all right, so now I'm going to just put this onto my mixer. Um, I'm going to use the paddle to do this, okay? And I will show you the mixer in just a second here. Okay, so let's get all of our liquid ingredients all mixed together. So I'm just going to use one of these containers here that we have. All right, so first of all, you guys, we have our Jehovah oil, okay? And we all know a lot about the Jehovah oil. Um, it's very close to the sebum that builds up in our scalp follicles, so it's a very light oil, but it's close to our own oils that we produce. Um, so that's good. It's full of vitamin E, K, and antioxidants, which makes it a great uh, for reducing scalp inflammation, redness, itching, okay? Um, and it's a natural antifungal properties as well. So we are going to put in five grams of the Jehovah oil Okay, and then we are going to add into here our DL-Panthenol. So our DL-Panthenol, we've talked about this before. 
Um, as far as the, the DM Panthenol goes, it helps with hair strengthening and it is loaded with the vitamin B's and things like that that are really good uh, for nourishing our hair. Okay, so for the DL Panthenol, 11 grams. And I'm going to mix it in this um, because it does get kind of lumpy. So 11 grams, and I'm going to just break it up into this oil. It is water soluble, it is oil soluble. Um, I just want to break it up because it's got some clumps before I get too much liquid in there. And it just makes it easier to mix in when we get to that liquid, I find anyways. Other people may have other ways that they do it, and that's fine, as long as we get it all broken down so it mixes in there. I don't put it in my dry powders for that reason, we'll just get lumps of it everywhere. So as you can see, I've got that all broke down. There's no white lumps, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, all right, and then we also are going to add in um, some cocoa betaine. Now, cocoa betaine is another surfactant Okay, um, it is just the liquid one. It's derived from coconut. Um, and we are going to put in 38 grams of the cocoa betaine. And then I'm going to stir this up so it's all dissolved. Okay, and then the next thing that we're going to add into here is going to be our aloe vera powder. Okay, so I use the 200 times aloe vera powder. Um, you could modify this recipe and use um, a liquid in here, but there would be a, a, some new formulations taking place. I use the powder, um, and I've got two grams of the 200 times aloe vera powder. Okay. And it does tend to get a little lumpy too, so just try and have that broke up a bit. It, it is water soluble, obviously, so we're going to put in our two grams and stir that. it will dissolve into that cocoa betaine. Okay, and then the other thing that we want to add into here is going to be our fragrance. So as far as fragrance goes, guys, um, I'm using peppermint and rosemary. Now, Peppermint essential oils increase circulation of the scalp, which is good for the scalp. Um, healthy scalp is pretty important to healthy hair. Um, it has antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties to it. Um, so it really helps with any scalp issues people have. And the roseberry stimulates and improves circulation to the scalp as well. Um, it does have antibacterial qualities, um, but is a very gentle cleanser. Uh, it also re relieves uh, irritated, dry, flaky, so dandruffy scalps. So that is a good addition um, as far. You could use whatever essential oils you want. I have peppermint and rosemary equal parts, and I am putting in 18 grams. Okay. And I actually really love rosemary mint scent. I'm just gonna break up some of these lumps. You may have to push them against the wall, guys. I'll probably get my wizard out here. I always call them wizards. I should uh, be my new slogan. All right, and then we, so I'm gonna get the wizard. I'm gonna break this up. So just give me one second. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix this to make sure all of my powders are dissolved. I could have added my aloe vera powder when I added my DL Panthenol, that might have been better.
But I, I, I really do suggest, you can see how this is emulsifying together. I really do suggest you get one of these little wizard things. It works very good. Um, you can see the cocoa betaine frothing out there. Okay, and the last ingredient I'm going to add into here, guys, is our activated charcoal. Okay, um, so it works to deeply cleanse the strands, effectively removing impurities from your hair, um, and it allows the hair to feel a lot lighter. You'll notice if you make this shampoo bar, your hair will feel just soft, so it will add volume to the hair. I do a video coming up on the conditioner to add moisture and um that after using this bar um, but for the activated charcoal we're going to use four grams and this is a very airborne powder so be careful with this wear your mask takes a little bit to mix it in but i don't want to go too crazy and get too much powder in the air Okay, you can see that's all nicely mixed in. Just get everything off the edges here. And we have this mixture ready to go. Clean up my mess I got going on. All right, so now that we have got to that point, I'm going to get uh, my melted down product and we're just going to incorporate um, both of these in. Okay guys, so we have our heated up emulsifiers and oils or butters I guess in here. Okay, and they do start to firm up fairly quickly but those are all melted down. One thing that I'm also going to add into here you guys, um, I almost missed, don't miss this, this is eight grams of Germol Plus. It is our preservatives. This bar does not have any water in it, but it will be introduced to the water. Um, so we want to make sure we have a preservative in there so our customers get um, a good product. You can use whatever preservative you want. Um, this is one that I use for this recipe specifically, um, but other preservatives would work in this. Just make sure you check the manufacturer's directions for usage ratio. I am using Germol Plus with eight grams. And I'm just going to mix it into this mixture so that it goes through my all my bars. Give that a little stir. Now I'm going to put my warm ingredients into the mixer first and then these ingredients just so that um, the hot ingredients doesn't hit my preservative. Okay, so now into our mixing bowl, we are going to just turn this on very low, mix the powder together. Probably a good idea to wear your mask, guys, because um, this can be very uh, airborne powders in here. Now, as this is mixing, I'm going to pour my melted ingredients into here and do it on low. So now that I've got all of that mixed throughout there, um, it will have cooled down those melted ingredients. I'm going to pour in the rest of our mixture that we had. And I don't want to get black all over the place, so I am going to just pour it in here. And then turn it on. 
chunk that went flying way over here. All right, and that is our mixture together, and now we will just press this into bars. Okay, guys, now we just need to press these. Hopefully you guys can see everything. Um, this is the mold that I use. Uh, you can use whatever shape mold you want. Um, the mixture isn't super sticky, as you can see. I mean, I can squish it in my hand. It's not horribly sticky, um, but it does tend to stick to molds. So what I do is I just use my biodegradable shrink wrap that I have, and I just do both my top and my bottom plate, and uh, that way I'm not, I mean, you can use saran wrap, whatever it is that you have, but that's what I use. So we weigh this out on the scale because we want to make sure that uh, all the bars are the same weight. So we just And I do a three and a half ounce bars, so a little bigger than maybe some people make them. You can make them whatever size you want, though. And then our top piece on, and I just quickly give this a little bit of a press. I'll move this closer. You could do this just with a hand press, that would work. It's fairly pliable. Okay, um, I just have my little thing, pop it up. And there we have our clarifying shampoo bar. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish pressing all of these. Okay guys, so this has all been pressed out now. So this batch made six three and a half ounce. Now, like I said, you can make uh, whatever size you want. I do these in three and a half for my big rounds. I also do a two ounce sample bar. Um, so it made five two ounce sample bars, six okay, of the three and a half ounce. And this is a one and a half ounce, so a short half an ounce for this one, but this is one that I will use. Um, but that's how much this batch makes. I'm going to let this dry um, for two days and then I will vacuum, or sorry, not vacuum seal, but I will shrink wrap this in my biodegradable film and label them and they will be ready to go. Um, I will have a video coming up with the conditioner bar that I formulated to go with these bars. Um, if that's something that interests you, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it. And if you like this video and found it helpful, um, if you don't mind giving me a like, it helps support my channel. And I hope you guys have a great day.